Do you see me? I mean, do you actually see Michael? Does the world really see gay men over 50? And why not? Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, all about things that are important to those of us who are over 50 and gay. Hi, I'm Tom Burke. And hi, I'm Michael Foley. And today we are going to talk about representation. What is it and why it's important, especially with all of the political changes happening here in the States, and also why it's so important that we over 50 gay men are also represented. We need to be seen, to be understood, to be accepted. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Amen to that, brother. Um, but before we get started, um, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to click like and subscribe and ring that little bell and you'll get a notification every time a new video drops. Thanks. Awesome. Yes. Thank you all. Uh, so, okay, Michael. So what is representation and why is it so important? You know, I, I looked back at our history um, when we decided to do this show and I can't help but think of the 80s and 90s um, and how so many of us decided to come out of the closet because we were in the middle of a health crisis and right. it changed the dynamic of our community. So being seen is hugely important, not only to us to build a sense of self-esteem and self, but to the world writ large because you know they don't understand what they can't see. And that goes for all right. of us. We, we cannot understand something until we see it we're confronted with it, and we're able to understand it. That's just the way human beings learn. Um, so representation is huge for our community, especially in this moment in history that we're entering. Um, you know, so for me, that is what representation is, is to be seen and to be understood, like you said. Right, um, and with that, then we can be accepted. For Absolutely, who we well, are. hopefully. But, you know, well, even if, because we're always going to have people who don't accept us and yeah. to live our authentic selves, regardless of that, representing who we are is hugely important because, again, there's always going to be those people who, for whatever reasons, just don't get it or don't want to. Well, you know, it's also the same within our own community. There are people within our community that are not accepting different parts of who we are right. and are just as judgmental and, uh, you know, dismissive to some of our brothers and sisters out here, you know, without a doubt. Uh, it, yeah. It's really funny that you brought this topic to our show, uh, this week because I had, I was just on a panel. It was a nationwide panel, uh, because of the work I do. And the topic was queer representation in film and television. Um, which was great. Uh, however, uh, we were talking a lot about the positive movements forward with representing queer people in film and television. But for me, I was like, um, yeah, this is great with heart stoppers and sex ed and they're all young. Like, where am I? Oh, you well, know, where well, are I'm so glad you brought that up. Cause one of the things I wanted to talk about was this yeah. amazing new show with Zachary Quinto okay, Brilliant Minds. Um, and it's actually based on a real life character. His name is Oliver Stack. He was the yeah. real life doctor. Um, do you remember the movie Awakenings? Yes. With Robin Williams? That was based on his life. Um, so this show has Zachary Plint Quinto playing this man who was a gay doctor way back when. Um, right. And this is the first time in our history that an hour-long drama is being helmed by an out gay character. Right. Like Zachary Which is Quinto's just going straight on into this. It's not, it's not in your face. The way they have built it is just brilliant. Warning if anybody's going to tune into this episode seven, have a box of Kleenex because you are going to ugly cry. I guarantee that. The show is so well done. And his sexuality, although he is an out gay doctor, that's not who he is. That's not what, I shouldn't say that's not who he is. That's not at the forefront of what he does for his patients, for the people yeah. he's in charge of. Um, so 
Yeah. Have you seen it yet? I have not seen it. Uh, I mean, I've seen clips of it. I haven't seen a whole show, but yeah, I, I was trying to do as much research as I could before yeah. I got in this panel. So I didn't sound like an idiot, but, um, I still have the question though, like where are the over 50 gays out there who are not stereotypically the flaming uncle, you know, like Bewitch's uncle, what was his name? Uh, uncle Arthur. Uncle Arthur. Played by Paul Lind, right? Paul Lind, yeah. who, you know, when we were children growing up, that, that was our role model. Right. You know, now luckily there's a lot more out there, but... Um, I still am looking for this over 50 gay male. Why is he not represented out there? Um, which was a big question for me, because again, we are being dismissed. We've had so many shows where we've talked about, you know, being over 50 and, and being not seen anymore. And I think when we're talking about representation, we have to get people to say like, hello, yeah, look at us. Right, we're just, a big just part of the show, population. It, it would be lovely to see somewhere represented, you know, the struggle that we have as an over fifty gay community. That's not the party homos, or you yeah, know, yeah. It, it it would be lovely to see that. And I'm not sure how. Do you know how old Zachary Quinto is? He's got to be in his mid forties by now, right? So it, yeah, you know, it's, we're getting there. And he, there's actually a relationship he develops with another doctor on the show who is definitely. A bit older than him, so um, right. we're there. It's it's happening way too slow because, like you said, with the other shows, it focuses on the younger queer community, you, right? Which is fantastic, and and I, yeah. you know, have to say that I love it. I love that these young people are are especially actors are being able to be themselves and not have to hide who they are. It's all great. I just want the biggest thing that we need to get through this representation is that statement that we both said we need to be seen to be understood to be accepted and i think if you all remember the show um oh now i can't think of it it's all the families family you know with the the, Is that the one uh, with gay, Sally field no 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 the gay couple it was a modern a family big, modern family modern family okay. right so during that period of Modern Family, where we saw this gay couple who were a, you know, married, they were monogamous, they were both out working, productive people, they were adopting children. That was all happening when gay marriage was happening. So middle America could watch that show and go like, you know, maybe they're not so bad. Right. Because and, we, and we become part of their family because let's be real, you know, in our culture, Media, television, movies, music have such an impact. Right. And to be able to turn on your TV and actually welcome a gay couple into your house is huge right. for a lot of people. Because again, it gives them an understanding that they didn't have before. Well, that's the thing. Watching that couple, and yeah, they were a little stereotypical, yeah. but they also were very stable, which gave middle America the chance to go like, okay, yeah, maybe it's not so bad. But now we don't have any representation like that in film and TV at the moment that aren't younger, that aren't this stable couple that are, you know, just like everybody else living on the street. Um, I am interested in this new show that's going to be coming out that's sort of a take on the Golden Girls with. Um, is yeah, it, I, I totally forgot who's in it. But uh, Matt, Matt Bomer. And, thank you. Yes. And uh, Nathan Lane. Uh, Nathan Lane. Um, yeah. yeah. It yeah. just... It I just, hope they do it as as well as the Golden Girls did when... Because I know you're not a Golden Girls fan, but as the Golden Girls found itself, they handled some heavy topics for the 1980s. And right, one I, of them was gay marriage. Yeah, I get that. I, I'm just afraid that they might go a little too gay and this is what we're supposed to be you know i'm hoping they don't i'm I'm, you know? I'm i'm hoping beyond hope and i'm not gonna make you know any rash judgment before i see the show but i'm hoping beyond hope that there's equal representation across the board in right. regard to our community right um, i'm keeping my fingers crossed because it's an amazing opportunity especially as we said earlier right now in the climate that we're in 
and the unease within our community about um, rights being rolled back. Um, right. Um, they have a they have a huge weight on their shoulders, so I'm hoping they're able to carry it and do it well, and to do it lovingly and with laughter. Let's hope. Yeah. Um, I was at a dinner party the other night, and the topic of reality shows came up because my husband loves them. I love watching Whoa. a lot of them as well. <laughs> um, but the topic of the representation also came up because they always, always, you know bring on the gay who is so flamboyant or so bitchy or so stereotypical. And we were, everyone around the table, it was all gay couples, just like, why aren't they choosing people like us? You know, normal people. And one guy at the table said, because we're boring and no one would want to watch us. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that's the case because let's be real. I know my life isn't boring and I know your life isn't boring. So we're not boring, but... I think, especially for reality shows. Well, that's a thing. This big, you know, wrecking ball of a homosexual comes in and, right. you know, is bitchy and does all this. That gets ratings. Well, that's, that's what it. People want to watch on a reality show, right? They want to watch the fighting and right. the backstabbing. That is what reality TV is. But that's the representation that we're fighting against. Right. We don't want that. We want to be seen as. Everybody else, again, we need to be seen as who we are to be understood and accepted. And that is just carrying through that Charles Nelson Riley and Paul Lind and bitchy kind of stereotype. Are you financially ready for this next chapter in your life? I thought that I was until I had a conversation with Kirk Bremer. Kirk, who lives with his husband in Colorado, is a financial advisor with the Maverick Wealth Group. And talking with Kirk was fantastic. First of all, he's part of the community, so there was no need for those awkward explanations about being gay or preferred pronouns. And Kirk creates a safe and supportive space, so you really feel comfortable talking about your financial future. Whether you're fully prepared or completely unprepared, Kirk is kind and understanding and will meet you wherever it is you are. A consultation with Kirk doesn't ensure that you're going to be floating around the Mediterranean in your private yacht, but you will leave there feeling less confused and more confident in your financial future. So whether you're fully retired or you're just starting to think about it, or you're worrying that it's never going to happen for you, do yourself a favor. Have a conversation with Kirk Bremer. You will be glad you did. Sponsored by Kirk Bremer AIF with Maverick Wealth Group, 720-688-3844, www.maverickwealthgroup.com. 123G Street, Suite 206, Salida, Colorado, 81201. Securities offered through Parkland Securities, LLC. Member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through SPC, a registered investment advisor. Maverick Wealth Group is independent of Parkland Securities, LLC, and SPC. Now, we can't put all this onus on just media and the entertainment industry. We have to live our lives that way, too, to be out, to have conversations that may make right. some people uncomfortable, but... You know, sh if sharing your life makes somebody uncomfortable, then that's their problem, not yours. You know, to talk about your husband and what you guys did for the holiday right. in a group of people where someone may be offended by it, um, that's on them. That's not on you. And to sure. to put that forward in a way that's not confrontational and just sharing your life. If somebody's talking about, you know, a straight couple's talking about, oh, we did this with the family, we did this with the family, to chime in as a gay couple or even a single person like me saying, this is what I did. You know, right. I, I went back to LA and spent it with my chosen family. That's what I did. And, and, and hopefully it elicits questions from somebody who maybe was like, what, what do you mean your chosen family? What is that? Right. You know, yeah. so it's, it's on us too to, to take that torch and to continue to push to be represented. Well, I, I totally agree with that. And I, I know I've mentioned this a lot that from the beginning of my relationship a million years ago, I have always felt it really important that my husband Scott and I be out there showing 
that here we are. We don't have to be walking down the street making out. Look at me sticking my tongue all the way down my husband's throat. But we're just there together representing not only to the world out there, but also to our community. I, I felt it was really important to also show the younger queer community uh, that this is also an option. Right. You can be in this monogamous relationship committed, you know, getting married, all of that. What you don't have to, but I just want to show you that it's that it's here. Right. Not because only to show them, to get them to ask questions. Yeah. You know, I, I back in I have always been a person who likes public displays of affection way back in the 80s and the 90s, before it, you know, two guys could walk down the street holding hands. I would always, if I was with somebody, grab their hand while we're walking down the street. And if somebody wants to throw down, I'm more than happy to go there. If somebody, you know, verbally assaults us, I'm more than happy to stand my ground. And I know there are a lot of people who aren't, but right. that is representation as well. Like being in a restaurant in the 80s and holding my date's hand or just being affectionate with him. We deserve that because straight couples do it without even thinking twice about it, Be, putting their arm around their partner or right. grabbing their partner's hand or just giving them a peck on the cheek because they find them so incredibly adorable. Um, and so many of us have held back on that because we're worried about what somebody else is going to think. You know, that's why I said it falls onto us to make sure our yeah. representation is seen. Um, and to me, that's always been a huge thing. And I, I know there are a lot of people who aren't comfortable with that, and that's okay. Um, but just well, little steps, right? Just something in your life that makes someone else go, oh, that's right, there are gay people in the world who actually have loving relationships or can show affection to each other. It's f funny when you when you said that. Um, not only myself, but my entire genealogy of waspy relatives, you know, went before me. We all kind of tensed up, like, no, we're not showing anything in public. Um, you know, I even look at straight couples who are like, like, oh, come on, knock it off, you know. You really? Can touch even, if, even if they're just holding hands or someone gives no, somebody No, holding a hands is fine. It's very yeah. sweet. Um, I don't want to see people humping them each other, humping yeah, each no. other in public, regardless of what their sexual preference is or right. what sexual prowess is. I, I, I don't want to see that. You know, it's just right. that's, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, but yeah, showing affection to somebody is, is a massive way to show, to be represented. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. And also just like what we're doing here today, we're on, you know, creating this show, this podcast, this YouTube channel, which is just getting us out there that, hey, we're, this is who we are, you know, accept us. And especially we're older guy, gay guys out here. We're still viable. We're still amazing people who have so much to offer. Exactly. We're as relevant as we allow ourselves to be. So well, there you, you go. Know, if we have an issue with the way we're being represented, we could change that. Um, well, I think you hear. I'm curious to hear what else was discussed on that panel that you were on besides just media. Was there were there any other topics that they they hit on and how we can well, it was, represent? It was just it was just film and television. Okay. So we were just talking about that. But one of the the biggest laugh I got of the whole day was when I I was asked this question: What's the difference between gay? and queer and i said oh about 25 years because seriously especially those of us over 50 we're gay right um but the younger generation are all kind of choosing these different monikers or whatever underneath the whole queer umbrella um we didn't have that when we were younger we were just either you were gay or you were still in the closet, or you pretended to be something else. Right. Um, um, yeah, but you know, a lot of us took that moniker back way back. Um, oh, yeah, no, I know as well. Right. So it's it's again, it's been a process to to own those words that were once used as weapons is uh, is hugely empowering, right? Right. Um, yeah. And I, I, you know, we discussed this in a very early show where it made you uncomfortable to be called queer. Yeah. And, and now you've grown to be more comfortable with it, right? You're even able to joke about it. 
Well, yeah, but I, I think if I was walking down the street and someone said, hey, queer, I'd, I would again tense up and turn back into that 13-year-old, you know, yeah. someone's calling you queer. Uh, so I don't know if, it, if I would ever be really comfortable with that term, okay. which is, but again, that's just who I am. And I accept it and I move on. The acceptance thing also has to happen within our community because there is so much yeah. infighting and so much judgment within our community, which you and I have discussed. It's ridiculous. Yeah, we, a lot of the letters want to stay separate. You know, we, because of, because of right. that exact reason. Right. You know, I know some so many people who don't understand the trans community, so they separate themselves from it. And sure. I am constantly reminding people they are our brothers and sisters. And they are as much a part of this community as we are. And to remember that, especially right now, you know, sure. you have, you have um, this new representative from Delaware, Sarah McBride, who's going to yeah. be the first trans representative in the House of Representatives. Um, and that's a massive step. Sure. And before she's even given her seat, like literally the day after this twat from South Carolina, Nancy Mace, said she goes to the bathroom issue immediately right. not knowing anything about this woman her life yeah. what she represents all she cares about is she's not going to go into the same bathroom as i am right and that's really sickening and and you know that is that unfortunately is a reflection of some of the stuff that goes on within our own community that not understanding and well, lack of Michael, willingness to understand. It's not just the different letters. It's also within our gay community, the kind of not accepting, if you're not like I am, I'm not going to accept who you are. And I mean, I've seen that a lot just doing this show where I get, you know, some comments like, oh, what would you know about whatever dating or whatever gay life? Because you're married, you're, you're conservative. I'm conservative because I'm married that you know there it, we're just all right. putting labels on people and judgment and where we should be building each other up and right. supporting each other and if you don't understand there's nothing wrong with asking questions and that's right. what you and i try to do here we pose questions right. and then we give our take and we ask you guys out there to give us your take because that's how we learn about each other right you know um right. because human beings have a tendency to be drawn to a tribe, right? We want right. to be with like-minded people. So married couples tend to seek married couples. Single guys tend to seek single guys. It's just the way we're, it's the way we operate, right? right? There's a difference between being in a tribe and accepting other tribes for exactly who they are and trying to learn about them than shunning them. Right. And you're right, within our community, sometimes shunning is the easiest thing to do because then we don't have to do any work. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you know. Um, which is so unfortunate because again, it's the representation that we're trying to put out there. If we are showing this infighting, well then of course, that's the representation that people are going to understand. Like, oh, well, they're all bitchy at each other and they don't like each other, so why am I gonna like them? You know, we have to be really cognizant of what it is we're putting out there, especially now, because of what's happening politically here in the States. Right. And I just do want to remind people that if a wave of judgment washes over you, you know, that that's more likely to be a symptom of something you need to work on than something somebody else is doing. Right? That's kind of how life works. If, you, if you're looking at something and judging it, number one, you don't understand it. Right. Um, number two, you're not being accepting. So maybe to turn that mirror around and have a look at yourself and go, do I need to work on something here? Because this should not be bothering me. Because right. 10 minutes from now, whoever you're judging will more than likely be away from you and out of your life. So what is it in you that elicits that kind of reaction? And just to have a look at that and go, oh, totally. do I need to do some work here? Is yeah. really a good thing. You know? I, when I was a freshman in high school, I went to this all boys prep school and the very first orientation, this old, old 
uh, I, he wasn't a priest. He was a brother of some sort, Christian brother, I think, um, gave us this talk. And he said, you're all, you're coming into this new school. You have to be aware of this thing. And he said, when you look at somebody and don't like something about them, that's usually something inside of yourself that you don't like. And I will never forget that old man, probably younger than I am at, you know, at the time, he's probably only 40. And I'm like, look at that old guy up there. But it just made such an impact on me. It's so true. And it's every time so I look true. at someone and think like, God, why, why are you like that? I, I, I will, I'm like instantly like, wait a minute. Is that something inside of me that I'm not liking? Um, yeah, it's exactly. It's, it's usually a, a judgment that's definitely directed at you, but turning it outward makes it so much easier. Cause again, you don't have to do the work when you're judging somebody else, right? Wow. That's kind of enlightening of him for way back when the dinosaurs roamed when you were in high school. I know, school. right? Wow. Exactly. Especially oh, in this, in the world that I was in, in that kind of like religious prep school for all boys to be able to say something like that, especially because we were all basically um, affluent white kids, you know? So to be able to say that I think was right. really great. See, and I that's, hope that's when spirituality actually works, right? Sure. When it's yeah. like, you have to do the work on you. Everything else is going to take care of itself. Do the right. work on you. Good on him. Yeah, it was great. Um, but we all have to remember that. Uh, and know that when we are getting a lot of things flung at us and words thrown at us and whatever, that it is, as you said, it's not us. It's them. It's their issue. It's their problem. They're not understanding who we are. And that's why it's so important that we are always putting the right representation out there so that we can be understood as who we are. And we're not all the same. That's the other thing. Yeah. There's Stop serious. expecting people to live by your rules. Right. You know? Um, or even to understand your rules, but just, you know, you want people to accept you, you have to accept right. others as well, you know? You don't have to live that way. You don't have to be that way. Like, I do not want to be a straight man having sex with a woman every day, you know? But do I accept them? Sure, they're fine. Let them do them. Exactly. You know? Where would we be without them? Right? Well, <laughs> exactly. There you go. Where would we be true. without straight procreation? Exactly. We'd be relegated to, you know, turkey basters and petri dishes. Exactly. There you go. All right, so we understand that this representation thing is really important. Um, it's important that we not only put out what we want others to understand about us, uh, but that we are also accepting of what others are putting out there right. as well. Um, and I don't know, like, is there anything else that we can be doing? You and I are doing this show. That's a great thing. Um, like I said, my husband and I are just out there showing the world what a 37-year gay relationship looks like, which is awesome. But what else can we be doing to kind of get the representation that we need? Yeah. Like I said, just it's, it's baby steps. Um, I know in the 80s, I came out in corporate America. You know, it started with one person that I trusted and then another person that I trusted. And over the course of time, there were three departments that I, I managed and everybody in every one of those departments knew that I was an out gay man. And it didn't have to affect the, well, it, I mean, what's funny is it, you, you don't think of it as affecting a bigger universe, but they go home and they share with their spouse or their family. Oh, cause you spend so much time at work. This is what's going on at work. And you know, I have this out gay manager and I'm, we, I used to have some heavy conversations with some of the people because they asked questions. Right. So just in your life, in your little corner of the world, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just to be a little bit more visible. That's what representation is. But we, we want them. We don't want them. It, it's important that we are representing within the framework that we're in. Um, bear with me on this. So like you were in corporate America, you were not wearing Daisy Dukes and a halter top. 
you know, running, skipping down the hall going like, hey, girl, girl, you know, like you were dressed appropriately for the job. The decorum was appropriate for the job. You know, so many people now are saying like, well, I'm just going to be me and, you know, fuck them. But I, I think we have to kind of, I don't know, be appropriate for whatever world we're in at the moment. Right. Does that now, make sense? I mean, it, it does, but who, do, who, who is allowed to define what is appropriate for us individually? And that only comes down to us. Now, there are situations where, yes, I had to wear a suit and a tie. Because right. that was the dress code. Right. So there was some conforming to that. But in that suit, I still represented a gay man. No. Uh, yes, and but you weren't. Were, uh, yeah. In, in the environment that you're, you're in, going, nobody would have gone to, like a, a woman wouldn't have shown up in a bikini. So exactly. there, there are right. certain structural rules that you may have to follow. But just because they're there doesn't mean you can't be authentic. In whatever well, drag no. it is you're choosing. Like if somebody works in a department store, um, you know, because you go to a mall now and a lot of the guys are walking around wearing makeup. And I think that's fucking awesome that they get to be able to do that and still do their job and be respected for it. Um, and that's what we're talking about because they still have to dress nicely if you're working at a, you know, a high end retail store. Right. Or even just a regular retail store. There's, there's a dress code. But you can still represent who you are within the, with anytime you walk into an environment, there are certain rules that we agree to, right? Yes. You walk into a courtroom, you're not going to be in a bikini and a hole right. or top, you know? So there are those rules, but you could still represent who you are. Well, definitely being representing who you are, but just being aware of where you are and the set rules for that place, you know? Because um, I love board games, right? So if you're playing Monopoly, you can't play by the rules of Parcheesi. But you right. can still play the way you play, right? You could be an aggressive oh. player or you could be a player who sits, but you could, whatever it is you want within the context of the rules that are set for you. Okay, that's a really good analogy. I think that's great. Um, because there are so many people in our community who are like, well, I'm just going to do it my way and be me and whatever and fuck all of them. So I'm going to play Monopoly like I'm playing whatever, something else. I don't know, Gabe. So or cheesy sorry. clue, pick one, you know. Mystery bait. Candyland. I'm going to play Candyland because it's so pretty and right. colorful or whatever. It's like, no, you can't do it that way. Um, but again, and you, they, you can play whatever game you're playing with the gusto and the truth of who you are. That's what you want to show people, not the fuck you, I'm going to do it whatever way I please to do it. That's not going to get the representation that we deserve and need. But also right? be willing to push back if you are playing by the rules and doing everything you're doing and somebody still has an issue with you to say, yeah, you know what, that's that's your shit. That's not my shit. It, it's owning, it's owning who you are and representing a bigger idea of, right. uh, of our community. Yeah. Cause that's, cool. to me, that's what I was doing in, you know, in the eighties when I was in corporate, I'm like, I'm not, cause the first question that any woman who, you know, back then was, do you have a girlfriend? Are you married? Oh You're yeah. Like, right. No, I'm gay. And that's, that's the way it was. And sometimes there was this look of shock other times, you know, a look of horror, but that always changed through time. Right. And it, it really made me happy that there were so many people willing to ask questions and understand me, you know? Yeah. Especially, but I'm, sure, but I'm sure there was just as many people who were not willing to ask you questions and who and that was okay with me, but I didn't, it's that, you know, don't hide your light under a bushel. Right. Right. I, I wouldn't change my behavior because of them. And definitely that's what we have to remember now, because we have been through so much, because we have gotten so far that if there are going to be some changes over this next few years that are going to be threatening us in any sort of way, we cannot hide our no. light under our Bushel? No. Is that what she said? Yeah. Under yeah. a bushel, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Idioms there, and... There, there are, there are anti-LGBTQ laws being passed 
all over this country and have been for the past few years. And a lot of them go unannounced or fly in under the radar. And so just to, to, to keep an eye on things, I understand that politics can be exhausting and the next four years is going to be exhausting. But just mm. tune in every once in a while to see what's going on because it does affect our representation. Right. Uh, it's a okay. lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's right. a lot, but you know but what? It's the alternative. Right. Going back and into the closet? No, thanks. No. no. Um, um, and we've been through a lot before and we made it through. We did. And, and we were going to make it through again. And this time we're going to be stronger because we're e an even more of a community that is supporting each other. So, yeah, we just want to make sure that the rest of the world, and again, I'm going to keep saying that one statement that you and I keep making is that we need to be seen so that people will understand us so that we can be accepted as just like everybody else because we are, you know. Um, and to check in on each other. Because I, I would love to encourage everybody single person out there who has the, the inkling or the desire to touch base with Sarah McBride once she's sworn into office, um, just to see how she's doing and to thank her for representing something that has never been represented in our nation's history, in the halls of Congress. Cool. Huge. Very cool. Huge. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. But you know, you know what's really weird? Do you remember Barney Frank? Of course. Yeah. Like, what happened to Barney Franks out there? Like, he was our gay, older politician that we were all looking up to, and then he went away, and nobody, like, took his place, really. Like, um, there's, why there's are... a lot of out politicians now. Um, sadly, they don't get the media coverage because being gay has become passe for the media, you know, in a right. lot of ways, the news media, I should say, in a lot of yeah. ways. So there's always something more salacious or evil to cover so right. we've sort of fallen by the wayside and sadly barney frank you know he had a little bit of a scandal with somebody who was saying who was younger than him and yeah. instead of standing up and going fuck you it's none of your business and doing his job he decided to take you know and it, barney had been fighting for a long time so i can understand right. him going you know what uh, this is too much i don't want it well, it also just wasn't the time, you know, yeah. for him to do that. So, but again, what's but, the time? You know, you look at Harvey Milk, and and yes, he was murdered, but what came out of that? Because there's yeah. never going to be the right time. The right time is when we decide to say it's the right time. That's it. All right. Well, I'm saying it's the right time for all of us over fifty gay men to get out there and and let's be seen. Um, be represented in the way that you feel is important. Do whatever you can to, you know, represent who we all are to the younger queer community, to the straight community, to the world. Show us, show everyone how really viable and awesome we are. And to be proud of it. Totally proud you of it. Know, just, you know, again, in your small little corner of the world, if you're not out to somebody who is in your life, come out to them. Let the chips fall where they may but represent who you are authentically and also the bigger picture, our community. Yeah. It's the, it, you know, it's that ripple effect. The yeah. little drop in the water will affect so much. The butterfly effect, all of that. A little thing that you do can affect so much. And then who knows, maybe a year from now, there's going to be all kinds of old gays on TV and it'll be fabulous. Right. And know? then let's, let's, I'm, 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 Keeping the faith for this new show coming out with Nathan and right. tell me his name again. Like why I can never remember his name. Matt Thank you. Uh, yeah, and if it's a success, then there will be a lot more of them to follow, Absolutely. which is always great. Without a so doubt. everyone, whether you, you know, tune in, make it a success. Yeah, and I have uh, to say, I love that this topic was the last subject for this final show of our season. I think this was yeah. a great way to end this season. So thank you so much, Tom, for having this conversation. Yeah, thank you very much. And thanks all of you guys out there for having this conversation with us and get out there and be represented the way you want to. And please let us know what your thoughts are on the gay, the queer representation out there, whether it be in film, TV, politics, your local 
drugstore, wherever you people are, you know, let us know. How are you being represented out there? How can they actually do that, Michael? You guys could hit us up across social media at the moniker No Two Gays About It. And just remember, it's the number two. We are everywhere you are, except for X. Um, you could also send us a more private message at Gmail. Um, and that's no two gays about it at gmail.com. And then we have Patreon. So you guys be can become part of our family there. Um, find a tier that works for you. It's, there's everything from free to whatever it is works for you. Um, and we appreciate the support you guys give us there. It means a hell of a lot. Um, and also on YouTube, you know, um, because on YouTube we have so many straight allies who comment yeah. and great. women and younger gay men, which just is awesome because this show, although it is run <laughs> by two old queens, is for everybody, you know, because the subjects are universal, right? Right. So there you go. Yeah. So make sure if you're if you're watching us on YouTube, leave leave us a comment. And also, as Michael said earlier, make sure that you hit like and subscribe. And there are a few special guys that we need to throw some thanks to. Yes. Who are those? Um, that's Lauren Javier, John Bonasante, Jason Cruz, Ted Zalewski, and Kurt Bremer, who support us over on Patreon at the executive producer tier. We thank you guys for your support, your encouragement, and your faith in us. Uh, means a lot. Yeah, it totally means so much to us. Thank you guys. Really, really appreciate it. But we also appreciate each and every one of you out there. Without you, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you for this really great season, Michael. Yeah, so until you, next um, time. Until next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening. We'll see you in the new year. See ya.